Well, we finished the Master Trials. It is time now for the non-Master Trials. Today we're just doing the motorcycle kind. What, well, am I really only done one stream? I thought I thought for sure that I was in the middle of a Trials game, but I guess, I guess I only did one stream of Evolution, so we're now on our second stream. And this is also, once again, Zelrog procrastinates playing Paper Mario. Actually have been kind of in the mood for that lately, but uh, the, the, the chapter I'm on kind of sucks. So I'm, I'm, I'm really putting off the stupid penguins. Anyway. Where did we leave off? Uh, I got as far as the B license test on the previous stream. And I think I also did some of the HD warehouse? Some of it, not all of it. I got a lot done in one stream. Let's see how much we can do in this stream. Hey, Darian. Uh, so I got the B license. Here's where I start to get worried, because I don't know how much of this game I'm going to be able to do. It's entirely possible in Trials games that we're going to reach a point where I just, I'm not good enough to do the levels. Because these games get hard, but we'll see. I don't think that's going to be this stream, at the very least. Is that what I looked like? Once again, assuming that I want to pick the fastest vehicle, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna eat that choice. Maybe I'm gonna find that's a mistake. Double check that there's nothing behind me, because sometimes they like to put squirrels there. Uh, how many of these games have you played, Darian? I know you usually show up to these streams, but I'm just curious if you've, uh, you've played them yourself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. Oh, I made it. I didn't need to, uh... I didn't need to back off like that. I think this might have been... Evolution might have been the first Trials game that I saw. Maybe I caught it during Trials 2. I'm aware of this series because of uh, Achievement Hunter. They do used to do a lot of Trials videos. Which, if you're watching these VODs back-to-back, -back, I probably just mentioned in the previous session. Played one back on the 360. So it could have, could have been... I think Trials HD. Now, you know what? That was probably the first one I saw. Trials HD was like the one that took off on the 360. Which is good because that was the first one. I'm not going to worry too much about gold until I like have to go back. I think we're going to reach the point where I need to start getting golds in order to unlock levels. Well, there's got to be something cool back here. No? Oh, wait. I feel like I remember this. I feel like... I hope I'm wrong. But I think I remember a guide where you have to specifically, like, find a way over that stupid, uh, that, that bar. Like, just because there's a bar there doesn't mean there's nothing. There's something behind that. I don't know that though, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend the time on something that could be impossible. Oh boy. Uh oh. But oh, this one's like a sonic level. This is our most evil Knievel stage yet. I like it. I like these. Uh, I like these levels that are like Hot Wheels tracks. 
just giant jumps and branching paths. Oh, that's not the end of the level. I'm not done yet. All right. I'll go for golds. That was just a warm-up. The first time was a, was a, a warm-up attempt. Honestly, I wasn't even really paying attention. Man. There's a bailout button, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Okay. Maybe I should do a uh, maybe I should do Burnout Paradise stream one of these days. I considered doing uh, Forza Horizons, just like a one-off, just for fun. But really, Forza Forza Horizons is kind of just the games that I play reluctantly because no one's making Burnout Paradise anymore. That's just the the, the closest thing we have now. I was also considering doing like an April Fool's thing where I there's a there's one car and there's like a joke car in I think Horizons four and five where it's just a, a little tiny vehicle the size that you could drive down a, go a grocery aisle if you wanted to and I just play the whole game like that. I don't know if I have to do this faultless or not. Oh, that's the end. Okay, I can bail out there if I need to. Yeah, I need Faultless. Alright. That was my time. I made the time. Time's fine. I probably mentioned this on the last stream of uh, Trials Evolution. This doesn't feel like Trials music. I don't know what does feel like Trials music, necessarily. I just, I, I don't think of, like, mid-2000s kind of new metal stuff when I think of motorcycles. Then again, I don't really think of whatever the, uh, the new games have been doing, either. That they're more like electronic, I think, in Fusion. My, uh, my brother for the first time in a while recently. He's got the... Uh, I don't know if he plays any games on PC, but he's got an Xbox. And he showed me the uh, like Xbox Game Pass library. I think they had at least one Trials on it, which I would hope so, given that it's like... A series that's reasonably associated with the Xbox. But they also had some weird shit on the list, like Feeding Frenzy and Feeding Frenzy 2. Peak gaming to uh, make your Xbox Game Pass worth it. I wonder if any of these are on the Switch, come to think of it, the Trial series. Surely the most recent ones. Still waiting on the, uh, uh, go ahead and date this video. Waiting on the announcement of the Switch 2, the Swatch. Still have not gotten that. Maybe I would be better off with not in the fastest vehicle for this particular stage. Uh, we finally got more news on Metroid Prime 4. 
it's been like years since we got anything concrete. And we have we have uh, actual gameplay footage, which not a series I follow, but I'm happy for his fans. Damn it. It looked to me too good to be on the Switch, except for one shot that was like it had like buggy frame rates. That that could have been on the Switch, but We do have that uh, Nintendo executive making the uh, Twitter, the corporate Twitter post that uh, an announcement on the Switch's successor would be happening before the end of the year. So, we're at least going to get news about it. Man. Okay, no, we're good. I can do this. Please? Wait, that doesn't count? Oh! Oh, it's only in multiplayer you can bail to the finish. I can't do it in single player. Man. I look like a gay slash. No offense if you're gay or if you happen to be Slash. Is Slash still alive? I just, I look like a dude at a, at a, at a, at a leather club whose gimmick is that he's Slash. Is this really worth a gold? I, I said I'd do it, but... Did I need to come back to this level just for one extra point? I know I can do it, but this is the point where the levels are going to start taking longer if I keep doing this. I need to go off that ramp a little slower than I have been. I need, I need to catch the ground at the right angle. Someone say they developed it on the GameCube as a framework. Uh, I mean, maybe in the context of they're still using the same engine for Metroid Prime One, which was on the GameCube. I don't think I buy they developed it on the on the GameCube specifically, but. same time, I really have to wonder, like, exactly how much more advanced the Switch is than the GameCube. What was the console that was the joke that died? Was it the Wii is just two GameCube glued together? Or the Wii U is two Wiis glued together? No, it couldn't have been that one, because the Wii U was not twice as powerful as the Wii. Nintendo does t tend to take baby steps with their uh, with their system specs. Like the Switch is now nine, ten years old, and it was obsolete when it released. It was underpowered compared to its competitors even at release, much less now. This is not news. I don't know why I'm telling you this. 
but man, as a Nintendo fan, I don't need handheld mode. It would just be swell if we could get more power, however that, however that happens. It's still going to be handheld mode because it was like a wildly profitable decision. And lots of people love that about the system, even if I'm not one of them. I just wanted to be able to play games at, like, a steady frame rate. That'd be swell. Oh, well, speaking of frame rates... Okay, well, that took way too long. All right, sewage plant. Sounds lovely. I haven't learned my lesson. I'm sticking to the scorpion. I also don't really I also don't really know how much stronger like the competitors consoles have gotten. I can't even keep track of Xbox with their like naming scheme now, but I don't know, it just feels like less of a leap each time these days. Nintendo kind of, sort of, has a trend where uh, every other console is a, like a financial stinker. But I can't even say that because... Uh... God damn it. A uh, little history lesson, the the Super NES had difficulties at first because that was the console market was like a new idea. And uh, the American people, the American public did not understand that they would have to buy a whole new console to play new video games. And obviously because it was new they didn't like that idea either. So that was a hard sell for the Super NES at the time. Alright, what do I need for gold? Three faults, one on... Oh, that's for silver. Alright. Well, I can do better than that, certainly. So the Super NES ran into trouble. And the N64 was, financially speaking, a failure compared to its competitors. It lost pretty hard to, uh... To place... Well, to PlayStation. Maybe not so much Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn was, uh... A little less successful. But PlayStation won that generation, and then PS2 just destroyed the GameCube financially. So much so, and so immediately so, that many of the game beloved GameCube games were uh, rushed out the gate to try to save the, so the console sales. Get up. You can do it. Man. Kind of makes me wonder what, like, an alternate continuity would, continuity would be like where all of these GameCube games were finished. Especially con since, like, many of them are considered classics despite them not being finished. I mean, they were finished depending on how you look at it, but, like, uh, they were rushed. Melee, Mario Sunshine. Wind Waker. So financially speaking, Nintendo kind of had three failures in a row. And then the Wii was obviously an explosive success. Wii U was not, and the Switch was an explosive success. Now, I would like to think that they learned their lesson from the Wii U, and that we're not going to get a repeat of that. We're not going to get, like, cocky Nintendo.
This is the spot that I keep falling in the holes on. Okay, I'm good. I think I got it this time. Gold. Yes! Sony and Microsoft are talking about ending the console war and unifying under one console. I mean, they might as well. They're basically the same fucking thing nowadays. They both have exactly the same business model, and they're both... With the exception of Sony's very, very few exclusives... They, they're... I mean, they're competing for the same market, but they're not really doing it in different ways. Like, you... Users don't have that much of a choice between them. It's just kind of what team you're on. Really, the major sides are... PC gaming, Nintendo gaming, and console gaming. Which is either or Sony or Nintendo. Sony or uh, Microsoft. Oh, hello. What are we doing? We're being wacky now. And I don't begrudge console gamers. I, I don't really see the point myself, but... Uh, on some level, I understand that a lot of people don't really just... They see uh, PC gaming as like a headache. They don't want to know how to make a PC or anything. I think some of these lead to squirrels if you just like let the animations play. Which I understand that, but it's it's... I think it's more intimid- I, I think people think it's more complicated than it is. As someone who's primarily PC, I, I just find it a hard sell to, uh... To want to get something that is, like, such a huge financial investment. As much as a PC would be. And, uh... To have to uh, pay for online is a big thing. I guess that's part of the investment, but like... I can spend a thousand dollars on a PC that can do pretty much everything. Or I could spend a thousand dollars on a console plus, you know, the lifetime of years of online for that console. And there's obviously emulation, which I make use of a lot. I get my money out of that for PC for sure. It was this Donkey Kong rope house area. Who's living here? Oh, that was silver? Wait, what happened? Did I hit replay? 43. Okay. Uh, what was 53? Okay, I gotta do that way faster. I'll give it a shot. I don't know, N Nintendo would, ever, like, would never be unified on a single platform, but, uh... They also do things with their hardware that, like, makes it unique. Not as much the Switch. The Switch's gimmick is just that it's portable. But stuff like the Wii U and 3DS and stuff that, uh... I don't necessarily see as necessary, but I understand... Like, there's a reason for them to be in their own category. Because they do things like that. I don't think this is it. I don't think this is the run. Nope. Uh.
It's almost a shame Nintendo is, like, known for that, because I think they're at their best in terms of game design when they're not doing any gimmicks. They make amazing games. Unfortunately, the eras in which they make those amazing games are also their worst performing eras. Like, a lot of their most revered games come from the uh, Nintendo 64 and GameCube eras. Which, granted, is also partly because that's when Nintendo has to try when they're not doing well. And it's the fact that they came off of three well, quote-unquote stinker consoles, financially speaking, that uh, when they finally had a hit with the Wii with casual audiences, they milked it for all it was worth. And I know a lot of people watching this probably weren't, like, aware or around during that time. But those of us who lived through the Wii era remember very well how, uh... Ah, <sighs> just short. How very quickly it felt like Nintendo just kind of abandoned all of their previous fans in favor of the, of the, of the grandma market. Nothing against grandmas playing video games, but boy, they were, uh, their marketing in that era. It just, it really started to feel during the Wii era like they, they didn't care about, you know, the gamers anymore. I don't know how to quantify it while playing a, a, a motorcycle game, but uh, I'm sure there's, there's more elaborate articles you could find about that era of Nintendo marketing. Oh boy. Oh boy. No, that ain't it. Just making sure. No, they don't want me to go over that. There's no way. It was also, the Wii was also a really, really well-known low point for Nintendo in terms of just the amount of shovelware on the Wii. Because when they found a casual gaming market, developers got money and got little money symbols in their eyes. Not big developers, like little, little bootleg nobody developers who just wanted some quick cash. Suddenly the Wii was in every household, and that mattered. Not like Wii was the progenitor of shovelware. If, if you like, if you look around. There was an insane amount of those types of games on the PS2 as well. Everything was on the PS2. Which, in its defense, was a big part of why it was so successful. I wonder what a timeline would have been like had Sega not failed in the hardware market in the console department. Because a big part of me thinks that the only reason X the original Xbox succeeded was because there was a gap in the market left by Sega for them to take. Because before X the original Xbox came around, Sega were the were the ones who were known as the uh, the more serious gaming console, the one for grown-ups, with the, the sports titles and the shoot-shoot games and the fighting games, things like that. I don't know if Xbox necessarily took all of those, but it definitely, the original Xbox marketed itself as, you know, the grown-up console, as compared to the GameCube and the PS2. And then that kind of, that swapped around come the 360 and the PS3. PS3 became the the, 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 the grown-up. That, that's who they were marketing towards. And uh, the 360 found a more widespread family audience with the, the game, the Xbox Live Arcade. Alright, Silver, what do you want for gold? 56? Mm, it's pretty tight. They want me to shave 20 seconds off. I could do it. 
but I'm not going to unless I have to, because this is we've reached the point where levels are going to start taking practice in several attempts in order to get golds. That was also a thing during the uh, the PS3 360 days as well, yeah. And that was the reason that I had a PS3 is because you didn't have to pay for the online for that one. It used to be you had the choice between the two. You could either have, like, not as great servers for free on PS3, or you could pay a monthly fee for online on Xbox and have, like, really good reliable servers. Which, given that, you know, you don't have to pay an online subscription for PC games, being able to play online. I always hated the idea of paying for, like, a monthly subscription for online. So, that's why I always avoided consoles that did that. I don't love that Nintendo has started, but at least it's a very affordable 20 a year. Which is way better than... The others have, have been doing. 37 seconds. I'll give it one more shot on this level. Uh, Darian, how likely do you think you are to get a uh, Switch 2 eventually? Because, like, Nintendo's the one of the consoles that you probably follow the least, right? I know you have one, but you have a Switch because we've played Smash on it, but I don't hear about you uh, playing a ton of Nintendo games. I would like to get one as soon as it releases, probably, but that'll depend on, like... I guess it'll depend on when it has games for it. The Switch, I think people forget, took a little while to actually get a library of games on it. Because, like, stuff like... I think Breath of the Wild was a release game for the Switch. Even though it was simultaneously released for the Wii U. But stuff like Mario Odyssey and Smash Brothers was not on the Switch at the time of release. It was kind of just a Breath of the Wild machine for a little while. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope. Ah, uh, that's gonna that's gonna cost my time. That's the run. I'm expecting Metroid Prime 4 to be on the Switch 2. That's my guess, because we know there's going to be an announcement before the end of the year. Well, specifically the end of the fiscal year. I don't remember when exactly that is, but... We know we're getting an announcement for the Switch 2 soon. And we know that uh, Metroid Prime 4 is supposedly for 2025. Sakurai has uh, recorded his final YouTube video for the channel that he was doing recently. And has uh, gone to work on whatever his next project is. Which I'm pretty sure we've confirmed there will be another Smash game, so most likely is the next Smash game being worked on. Again, 
Not a Metroid fan, not a Metroid Prime fan myself. I wonder what the likelihood of that uh, that bad guy, Silex, being in the next Smash is. I don't know anything about him, but he looks cool. Put the Trials guy in Smash. I want to use Motorcycle Foo on people. Like uh, like the first episode of Dorarara. You like that? That was a 5%er. None of you watched Dorarara. I didn't either. I stopped part way. This freaking that thing in the air gets me every time. Uh, this okay. This is striking me as not worth it. The more I attempt this level, you know what? No, I'm good. Uh, exit. Is that gonna close the executable? No, okay, good. Now, I'll only go for gold if I, if I run out of, uh... If I run out of metals. Maybe I'll do it off-stream if I need to, uh... If I need to resort to unlocking levels. Because eventually these streams reach a point where... I mean, they already kind of reach a point where I'm just podcasting, but, uh... They can get very repetitive to watch. Just the same thing over and over again. On one level. I don't like that jump. That's a mean jump. There we go. I haven't gotten them yet, but uh, I also have mentioned I want to do streams of the games that came before Trials. I think they're called, like, uh, Action Motocross was the first one, and Elasto City. I, I know I got that name wrong, but there's, like, two, like, progenitors for these, like, uh, side-scrolling motorcycle games before Trials 1. And before the ultimate defining entry in the genre. Spongebob Bodocross. I gotta save the best for last. I gotta play all the others before I do that one. silver. I'm just, I'm gonna start getting silver on every level th from this point on. 121, no faults. That time is doable. It's the no faults that is just annoying and leads me to, like, start the level over and over again. Lack of compatibility with PS4 games. Is it, uh, Is it backwards compatible with, like, PS4 discs? Or is it just, like, some PS4 games? I didn't know they still had backwards compatibility other than the stuff that they chose to put on the... on, like, the PSN store. Thinking of investing in a Steam Deck. Is the portability important to you? Because you might as well just, like, invest in a, T in a PC. If not, I'm glad the Switch has a competitor in the form of a Steam Deck because anytime Nintendo has something to sweat about, they tend to like not get a swollen ego. Ego. It's just the problem with those thing things like that and kind of consoles in general is that you can't upgrade them in the future if you so choose. Oh, 
Uh oh. Oh, I should have waited. I should have waited. We got metal now? They put Death Clock in the game. Put their big, stupid motorcycle with four sidecars. I want to play as that. You can play every PS4 game on PS5. Well, that's good. They skipped it for a generation, and then they, they started caring about backwards compatibility again. When I assume that was something everyone complained about in the PS4 era. Then again, I've also heard the PS3 was, like, a nightmare in some way of how, like, the data is structured or something. Like, emulating emulation for PS3 games is a huge pain. Ignorant hearsay, so take it with a grain of salt. But maybe that had something to do with why the PS4 was not PS3 compatible. I don't like this. Let me just let me just ignore that. Uh oh. Don't think I'm gonna be wildly successful with four, uh, four bales. Yeah, that's bronze. All right, no, I'm not taking a bronze. We gotta at least get silver. Which is another reason that uh, people are excited that uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 is, well, supposedly getting, uh, getting ported in the Metal Gear Collection 2 because uh, that one is stuck on PS3, and it's, like, impossible to emulate. I probably know the answer to this, but, uh... I don't suppose Blur is on PS4 or PS5. Given that the studio is defunct, and you say they're being selective with what they have on the, on the store. That's not even on Steam anymore, and that is devastating to me, because I would have loved to have the Steam version of Blur. It was- it was one- it was on Steam once, and it was removed. Maybe I could, uh... Maybe I could, you know, shiver me timbers. A, uh, PC version of Blur. Maybe that's floating around somewhere. I can't get it anywhere else nowadays. And, uh, as was shown with the PS3 emulation stream, it is partially emulatable, but not fully emulatable. And that makes me sad, because I, I would like to play that game again. Bad jump. Awful jump. Hate that. I'm using the X button to accelerate, which is probably a mistake. I guess I should probably be using the shoulder, because I can, like, uh... I can, like, adjust how much I push that down. Alright, two bales. What do they want for gold? 51 seconds, no no bales, no faults. All these faultless run, I think, is every gold faultless? Probably. They probably want fault, faultless for all the goals. golds. When do we get another bike? That's probably license related. Probably don't get another bike until I get the... Uh, I think the A license is the next one. I think I have B right now. If 
there are a couple cool se cool sequences in uh, in the Forza Horizons games. Stuff like you uh, racing trains and airplanes and things. The problem is the Burnout Paradise, what was fun about it is that it wasn't really a racing game as much as it was a, like, collect-a-thon in a car. That's what I found fun of it, fun about it, and given how many people reminisce about the game, I assume a lot of other people liked it for that as well. You would just drive around this city with all sorts of, like, cool hidden spots. And shortcuts, and underground paths, and ramps, and things. It was like a Hot Wheels city, and there was just full of collectibles everywhere, that you, you were always working towards something. But Forza doesn't like to have Hot Wheels cities. It, it likes to have, like, realistic cities. And that's less fun. 53 seconds. I can do it. I'm gonna try it. It wants faultless. It wants just slightly better than my time. I'm gonna try this one. Gotta look into a Castlevania 64 Archipelago. We did that more recently than I thought we did. That was, like, January of this year. We did Archipelago. It feels like longer ago for some reason. But, uh... My current plan, in terms of streams, is to... Prob hopefully finish Breath of the Wild completely in one more stream. And I want to finish that completely before I start this year's Majora run. Which will probably be something stupid like an entr entrance randomizer. There is a PC port that recently came out, but it doesn't have the randomizer functionality yet, so I might wait on that. We could do Archipelago again with not Ocarina of Time, but I don't know what other game in that that I would be, like, especially keen on playing, I guess. No! No! Ah, oh, I was so close! I'd have to look... I guess I could do, like, Mario 64, but, like... Zelda games work so well with randomizers. It kind of just feels like a waste not doing a Zelda game in one. You know what I would love in Archipelago? Tony Hawk. I would totally do that in one of the Tony Hawk games, where, like, every every level goal is a check or something. I don't know what would be randomized about Tony Hawk itself. Like, stat points, maybe? That'd be something. I wonder if anyone in the Archipelago team has thought... It's not really a team. It's, like, whoever wants to develop these... Uh, these each game's support with it. So a game kind of just doesn't happen until someone decides they want to add that game. Hey, we got gold. I wonder if there's anything wacky I could do in Ocarina. If we did do Archpel, go with Ocarina again. To, uh, compensate. I also wonder if there's gonna be anything else to do relating to Ocarina... ...come... ...the end of this year, because Ocarina is our, uh... ...Ocarina Randomize is something I do every winter, generally. But I also try to do something, like, a little different each time to keep it fresh. I could do, like, Ocarina Entrance Randomizer. I've done that off-stream. It fucking sucks. But, uh, I haven't done a stream of it. It's also a little hard not to do, like, the PC ports of those games when they exist, because, boy, they look- they look so nice. I'm so happy we're getting PC ports of N64 games. That's so cool. 
and some other games as well. Jack and Daxter, the first one on PS2, just got a, a PS2 port recently. Someone did a, a decomp of that game and ported it to a native PC. Kind of a shame we didn't play that version. We we played the uh, we played the PS2 one emulated before I had a computer a CPU strong enough for PS2 emulation. So it just kind of ran like shit. It was kind of funny, but it, it did mar Jack's uh, Jack experience a little bit. I think there's a... I think the rare shooters have gotten PC ports. I, before the decomp tool, even, someone made a... Uh, I think a GoldenEye and Perfect Dark PC ports. With uh, mouse and keyboard support. Which, not my genre, but uh, happy for fans of those games to have, like, real shooter controls on them. Okay, A, a license. I'm going to skip ahead to get this and unlock new bikes right away. I have the inverse Scorpion, the Phoenix. These stats feel so arbitrary. You would think the max stats vehicle would be the last one you get, but that's not how this game works. Okay, accelerate and bunny hop to, to clear the jump. Yep, know that. Uphill bunny hop. Oh boy, my favorite technique. Is this- am I doing it right? Oh, that was the wrong button. Oh, I want to reverse. That's what I want to do. I know all this. Come on. Give me my A license. New rider gear unlocked. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, you guys still see the game. I just got a pop-up. Trials Evolution Gold Edition Unsupported Browser. Log into your Facebook account? No. Get out of here. Did I hit the Facebook button by accident? Because I wasn't trying to. Weird. Uh... Alright, well, now that we got the A license, let's see what we unlocked. Maybe we got, uh... Maybe we got more, uh, Trials HD stuff. Space suit. Oh, I can be Captain Skyhawk! You know what? I'm doing it. Oh, I gotta buy it? That's- that's expensive. That's a lot of money. Can I complete the look? Kind of limited character creator. Ancient armor. Oh, I have that already. Why do I have that? Do I not have, like, armor bottoms? Why would you give me an armor top and not armor bottoms? Maybe I can maybe I can cheese a little bit. Oh, only the knees. Man. Fine. Vintage gloves. Now, armor gloves. Wow, that's annoying that they only give you part of an outfit. Did I just delete my feet? Oh, 
Hope I didn't have anything else I needed to spend money on. I remember when the DSI let you log into Facebook. I don't. I also didn't have a DSI, though. Yeah, we're going full leather. There we go. Got a match. Got to look nice. All right, let's check out the let's check out the HD warehouse again. Hard extreme. Okay. So this is also just unlocked by number of metals. Not necessarily my license. I'll come back to that when I have all the levels. I'll keep going through this for now. Donkey! Okay. So, wait. The Micro Donkey, the 60cc vehicle, the famously slowest in the game because it's 60cc, less than half of the Rattler, has higher speed and acceleration than the Rattler? These stats make no sense. I am so confused. Well, let's try the Phoenix Evo, I guess. Absolutely baffling. Uh, did we lose sound? What happened? Okay, there's menu sounds. Wow, this, this motorcycle's engine is so quiet. I broke it. I hear the vroom vroom. Is it just this level that's broken? It's just dead silent. Well, it's very zen, I guess. I still feel like I should probably be using the the 450 cc vehicle because it is 450 cc. Maybe you're right. Maybe it was Facebook that messed with it. Maybe I need to relaunch the game. This this is going to be a bronze. I messed up too many times. Okay, I don't like this one. Is this supposed to have, like, better handling than the Scorpion? I turn slower. Yeah, I don't like this. Alright. I'm going to exit the game fully. I'm going to relaunch it, and then I'll, uh... I'll take on that level with, uh, with the Scorpion. Yeah, the menu music's gone, too. What the hell? All right, come on, Steam. Game stopped. Oh, it was it was the Ubisoft thing that had to had to sync the the save data. Now it has to launch again. Hand me the keys, this motorcycle. Let me start it up. Yeah. Go. Time to let the m -m 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 Monday night throw. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Lock up the basement and the front door. No one's coming in. Top time trial. I'm getting ready, baby. I'm racing all night and wild. Everybody's here waiting to play. My eyes yeah. all day. Yeah, here we go. 
Wait, was that a song about a dude, like, locking himself in his room to play Trials, the video game? Well, the music's back, so I guess it worked. Alright, Archipelago, this time with the Scorpion. Am I still... Yes, I am still Leather Captain, uh, Captain Skyhawk. So what's after this game? After this game is Trials Fusion. And then there was another one. That Trials Fusion isn't the latest one. There's one after that. I don't remember the name of it offhand, though. Yeah, this this one just feels the best. The Scorpion. I remember the ones I played. I don't think I've tried all of the all the bikes in this. Could try the donkey, I guess. Okay, silver. That's more like it. Trials Fusion. series. I'm sorry, this isn't important, but it's gonna bug me if I can't. Trials Rising, that's the newest one. What is this spooky music? Why are we getting spooky music in Trials? That old YouTube logo. Yeah, you can see you could see at the at the like main menu for this game it was unable to load content. Sadly, game is no longer supported, but uh a part of me regrets not I the the, the newest one Trials Rising is the only one that I don't own. A part of me not regrets not getting more involved in the communities for these games. Especially because the uh the things people make in these games, the level editors, is just is nuts. I wonder if there's any kind of archival project, or if uh, all the all the custom levels in old Trials games are just lost to time forever. It was kind of inspiring to see how many people came together to uh, start archiving shit. When uh, it was revealed that that uh, Flash was going to be going down, that was a cool thing to happen. Uh, one minute faultless is for gold. Mind bender. Oh, uh, what are we doing? Why are we sideways? I don't like this. I'm leaving. No? Okay. There's nothing back there. So, am I rotating, or is the building behind me rotating? I guess the point is that I don't know. It's, uh, relativity and all that. Oh, boy. I'm feeling wacky physics. I don't know what's happening. I think it's the building that I'm on that's rotating. Because it's affecting my uh, my momentum and jumps and things. One of my uh, one of my favorite stages that I made in Smash Ultimate was just uh, 
it's just it's battlefield or it's final destination it's one of those like very basic designs but the entire stage is very very slowly rotating in a circle so slowly that like it's impossible to tell from the player's perspective so like sometimes you'll make a jump back to stage and sometimes you won't and it really fucks with people I hope the next Smash game has a uh, more elaborate uh, stage editor. Now, I say that because... I say that in the way that I hope it has, like, more usable parts and things that you can... that actually, like, do things in the stage for you to use. I seem to be the only person who wanted a Smash Brothers stage editor to, like, make stages in. Because everyone else just kind of wants to draw in it and play on Squidward's bouncing ass or something. That's why everyone else wanted a stage editor. Oh, that was weird. No, get up. Please get up. Oh. It's like a Tears of the Kingdom object, that floating water cube. What a strange thing to be in a Trials game. Oh boy. Oh boy. I like this level and also hate this level. Did he at least die with dignity? Is that it? Alright, I didn't want to let the whole thing play. custom emblem editor in Call of Duty for the same reason. It's not even just the fact that, like, so much of it is, like, juvenile or vulgar that is annoying. To me. It's the fact that no one seems to want to... Well, in Smash Brothers' case, it's that no one wants to make stages that are interesting as stages. They basically just want to make drawings and play on drawings. So it's really hard to play custom stages with people because, you know, most of them don't play well because that's not what was being thought of when they were being made, is how the level plays. Used to be a pretty common thing for games to have, like, uh, decal editors and things like that. Mario Kart DS had one. F-Zero GX on the GameCube had one. Now, granted, F-Zero GX was not an online game, so there wasn't really any harm in that. They must have had the uh, they must have had the Nintendo Dick Patrol on early to have that feature in Mario Kart DS. Uh, if they had a decal that was visible online, they had to have been hiring people to to watch for dicks. That's what they do in Nintendo games, right? Someone's on Dick Patrol. Play on drawings, go play worms. Well, even then, you can make levels that are, uh, like, designed to be played on. Speaking of, I have, uh, highlights of our first worm session almost done. There's a number of highlights that I have, like, I, I get through the footage and they're just sitting waiting for me to do the hard part, like, actually editing it all together. Worms is one of those. I have all the clips I need, I just I haven't gotten around to doing the busy part yet.
Put worms in Archipelago. Put the single player in there. That'd be a, that'd be a weird one. Even if it is Ocarina again, I might just wait until uh, might just wait until winter rolls around again because I'm always curious what stupid games they're going to add to that. Stupid games like Castlevania. What a stupid game. Why'd they add that? 64 of all things. Slash sarcasm. I really hope they add Donkey Kong 64. I want Wicker to play that. Or Banjo. Kind of surprised they don't have, like, Banjo wasn't a priority. That seems like a great game for a randomizer. Which it is, it has randomizers, just it's not Archipelago supported. Hello. I, I don't see who posted hello, the name has drifted off screen, but hello, welcome to the stream. The stream in which I... kind of don't pay full attention to the motorcycle game and just kind of podcast a lot. It depends on the level. We're getting to the levels that I have to pay more attention to. Actually, you know, it's not usually that I'm not even not paying attention. It's just that even when the levels get hard, this game gets very repetitive to watch. I, I acknowledge that. It's why more people don't stream Trials, is that uh, it's, it's kind of boring to watch, but uh, it's fun to play, so I'm playing it. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Stay upright. We want no faults. Ah, uh, we got a fault. No! There we go. Alright, silver. Good enough. You found trial. You found trials fun to watch. Well, I'm glad. The uh, the achievement hunter videos were all uh, were all like uh, very heavily edited. That was also just kind of the format of their videos at the time, though. It was short form. They would do highlights reels and then talk over them. So, welcome to the uh, the indie knockoff of trials. Now purchasable on Steam. Join the uh, Shadow Biker on an epic quest about uh, finding and discovering himself with lots of symbolism and, and black and white silhouetted forests. Sometimes I feel like the only one who finds this sort of aesthetic, like, very depressing. I don't begrudge people who like it, but, uh... I don't know, I see a lot of indie games like this, and people just, they fall in love with this style. Of, like, uh, darkness, and a lot of, like, faceless protagonists. That that's, that is a common thing for some reason. It's always like a little dude wearing a mask of some sort. It just just kind of makes it feels like a world that I wouldn't want to be in, and therefore a game that I wouldn't want to like play for a long amount of time. Just my shitty opinion. Uh, Darian, have you played uh, Rayman Legends or Rayman Origins? 
I've heard good things about them, and they look interesting in terms of being like, uh, you know, 2D platforming Rayman again. With four-player co-op, even. I just, I haven't gotten around to playing them. What do I need? What do I need? No, show me what I needed for silver. Uh, three faults, one thirty. Okay, I just one less fault. I can do that. Rayman is one of those series where I have a, a connection to it, sort of, but only to the first game. I don't know why I said one of those series, as if there's multiple series like that. There's probably are if I think hard enough, but, like, uh... It's a series that I liked the first one, and then it changed into something else, and now I know I'm never gonna get, like, the original Rayman charm again, sadly. Actually, a lot of people feel that way about uh, Jack and Daxter. Some people love the first game, and then they were uh, upset when it became... You know, hard and gritty and, like, GTA clone. Not yeah, clone, but took inspiration from GTA in uh, Jack 2 and on. So there's a lot of people who just only like the first Jack game. Uh-oh. I don't like this jump. That was my last fault. A lot of people don't realize how much, uh... How long Rayman spent in the Rayman 1 world. They milked that for longer than you would think before Rayman 2 came out. There were a number of, like, uh, Rayman 1 spin-off games, like an educational game, things like that. With uh, new music and cutscenes and art and everything in the style of Rayman 1. And obviously I don't really have an interest in those games because they're for preschoolers, but... It's cool to see more stuff in the, in the Rayman 1 universe, so to speak. Alright. Yes. One cycle. One run. Gold medal. Rayman 2 and on just be kind of became this weird world where... I don't know fully how to explain it. It's like there's no like consistency to anything. Characters like Globox exist who are just like globs. That's it, that's the character. It's a weird shape with a mouth. Which I later found out is apparently a fairly common style among French cartoons. Like, there's the... There's the more dramatic, anime-inspired French animated shows that I like to watch, like Wakfu and Kotoyoko. And then there's a more traditional faction of, of uh, French animation... Like, uh, what is this, like, show about, uh, Ozzy and the Roaches or something like that? And the more traditional, cartoony French animation is just very similar to the Rayman 2 style. It's just vibrant, colorful blobs, kind of. Oh, yeah, no, please! What was that? That was nothing. You don't die from that.
I have to uh, stop and realign myself on the <sighs> on the scorpion a lot. I wonder how much of Trials Rising is playable in tandem mode. We did play the demo, me and uh, me and Jack. We played it in tandem mode. And it was very silly. I just wonder how if that's like if that has its own levels in that mode or if it's just you can play the entire game that way. Which would be incredibly difficult, it should go without saying. How many we got? Four left. Giga track. I remember Giga track. Are we almost done? I think Giga track is like the final mainline level. I'm just wondering what the bottom row of levels is. We also have the, the Trials HD warehouse we could still do. have any games that I'm super hyped about coming out at the moment. Uh, Spyro 4 has not been officially announced, but all signs are pointing it to pointing to it being in production, and that will be a day one for me. Assuming they don't, like, royally screw it up somehow. I think the coolest thing that they could announce that I would be, like, so, to completely down for would be a, uh, Another Tomodachi game. But uh, who knows when or if that will happen. I'm not too interested in the new Zelda game. I already kind of don't love top down Zelda, but especially this one, because it's cool that we finally get to play a Zelda, but. I, I feel like the the summoning stuff will be cool for puzzles, but kind of like frustrating and gimmicky for combat. We'll see. I'll, I'll probably I'll watch someone play it, but I'm not going to play it myself. I'm still very, very disappointed that they didn't get to make Tony Hawk 3 plus 4. Because, uh, was Activision, is that the, that the publisher? Pulled the studio to instead work on Call of Duty, as they did so many studios. I even made the time, but not the faults. I'm going to do that again. I can do that one. That one's easy. I don't remember what that studio was, the ones that did uh, Tony Hawk 1 plus 2. Toys for Bob, thankfully got uh, out of Activision, and they became independent, which is probably why they're now able to work on Spiral 4, to some degree. That's the fault. That's the spot I gotta watch out for. I'm also pretty excited about Pal World, Pal World's development insofar as I have had a ton of fun playing that game, but 
it's also going so slowly that I don't know when or if to expect something new or interesting from the game. And the stuff they seem to be focusing on adding is not a ton of stuff that I care about. It's kind of crazy to me that that, can be such, that game can be such a blowout success. Like, the studio has gone on record saying, We have so much money now, we don't know what to do with it. And yet updates on the game are being very, very slow. Like you use the money to hire more people. <laughs> Get the game done. How about that? Vicarious Visions. Are they the ones that did uh, Tony Hawk? Okay. I'm curious what's going to be going down in the game, in the like corporate gaming world in coming years, because that was Hi-Fi Rush was a big blow to just the whole industry's PR. You know, the game that won like several awards and like huge acclaim was wildly profitable, and then they like they shuttered the the studio. Is that what happened? Maybe, maybe I'm not doing as good as I thought I would do. Now I'm going to get it faultless, but I'm not going to get the time. Because now I'm trying to be too careful. There's the jump, and I missed it again. Didn't matter. It seemed so easy. I was so sure I could do it. How'd I make that jump so smoothly the first time? Okay, there's this. No, it's not this one. It's not this one. That one I need speed to get over the bar. I think it's the jump after the bar that I gotta be careful about. What if they made a real Botocross game? Like a full console high effort version of SpongeBob Botocross that was on par with a Trials game. In terms of like the level design and everything. Then everyone would play it and be like, Oh my god, how is ne no one made a game like this until now? I'd still play it. I like how, uh... I like how AI Spongebob keeps popping up on YouTube, and it keeps getting shut down. Because Nickelodeon knows better than to let anyone shit on Steven Hillenburg's grave. the lost cause. Should I even be doing this? It's, it'll be easy, I said. I was so close to the gold the first time. I just have to do it one more time. It'll be easy. I hope the next Trials game is a better character editor. 
It is kind of just sad how little of it there is in this. Like, why bother? Nope. Ah! Man. More, more bloopers are coming out of the, of the characters swearing. That's cool. I hope no one, like, does the wrong, that, like... I hope no one takes that in the direction that the, like, the, the leaked Dragon Ball recordings went in. I hope that doesn't need to, that doesn't need to happen. Speaking of uh, Dragon Ball, I don't know why I'm talking about this, because Deb been talking about it with Darian, but uh, just for something to talk about in the video. There's been uh, more updates on Dragon Ball Tenkaichi 4, Sparking Zero. Yajirobe's confirmed, along with some dude who was apparently in Dragon Ball Super, but I have completely forgotten existed. Is it Analaza? Is that his name? He's like some Frieza slug dude. It's gonna be really weird to play as a lot of a lot of the Dragon Ball Super characters in a Tenkaichi game. Like the what? Because Dragon Ball Super has a lot more. Uh, it has a lot more comedic undertones than most of Dragon Ball Z did. There's a lot more, like, goofy characters and jokey characters, like the, uh, the, the Magical Girl parodies. Though They're gonna be strange to play as. And personally, there's not a ton of Dragon Ball Super characters I'm particularly attached to. Other than, uh... Cauliflus is shoe in. Be cool to play as her. Uh, I like Belmod, the, the clown, but he's probably not going to be playable. And Chilai might be cool, the, the alien girl from the Broly movie. Just because, I, I don't know, playing as like a rogue-type character in a Dragon Ball game sounds like it could be novel, but uh, that's also a bit of a stretch. We're probably not, probably not going to get Chilai. I hope King Cold comes back. Oh, yeah? So, so he can use energy wave, full power energy wave, energy wave volley. If they change one thing from Tenkaichi 3, please let every move in the game be like named, even if I have to make something up. Let an intern do it. That'll be better than energy wave. Right now, everyone's biggest hang-up is the GT characters. Haven't shown a single GT character. Mm, yeah, that that is. That would be that would be a little sad for me to not have any GT in the game, especially since the. Well, I guess we have we don't know how big the roster is yet, but. It is not a terribly large secret that I am more a fan of Dragon Ball GT than Super. More of a fan of uh, Full Metal Classic than Full Metal Brotherhood. I'm more a fan of Helsing than Helsing Ultimate. Yeah, I'm the weird one. I know. In fact, I've been watching a lot of these uh, multiple variation shows with Darian of late. Probably the most recent one being Hunter Hunter. Uh, I think overall I did like the 1999 series that no one else has watched better of the two. At least for the parts that it covered.
the er, the 2011 Hunter x Hunter, the soundtrack early on was pretty limited. It, it took them a while to like build up enough songs to have a complete soundtrack, I feel. And the quality of the songs was just okay. But later on in the series, it filled out quite a bit. Now, where we're at now, I quite like, I like the soundtrack. I didn't realize it was the uh, the Death Note composer. Because you really wouldn't be able to tell in the early series. It's not until the late stuff that uh, it starts to sound Death Note-y. I might even recommend for people to, uh, if someone's new to the series, I might I might recommend them start in the 99 series and then jump over to the, the modern series, like after it ends, because, well, like I said, I think that's where the, the soundtrack starts to take off, is around the York New Arc, which is where the original ended, so. I, I think you would get the best experience that way, assuming you don't want to watch both versions. Is this the run? I'm paying attention now. This is the run. Gold medal. That took way too long. That didn't need to take as long as it did. Now that I've watched Hunter x Hunter, I'm looking forward to that Nendy Impact game. I don't know how much you've looked up, but I would advise against looking stuff up relating to the series. Because uh, it's a series that's full of twists. Fun twists. Uh... A ma big reason that I respect it so much is that it avoids a lot of the... It subverts a lot of the tropes and things that uh, other shonen anime falls back on way too much. I know I keep mentioning the soundtrack, but it is kind of interesting. This series as just like a timestamp of the music of when each game was released. And I know I'm going to point this out when we get to uh, Trials Fusion and Trials Rising. How different it is compared to this soundtrack. I don't remember what the previous game soundtracks were like. I don't think I was paying that close attention to the soundtrack in Trials 2. Oh, this ramp sucks. There we go. Okay. Oh, no. What am I doing racing in Dracula's castle? How did we get here? What led to this sequence of events? Is there wall meat around here? Oh, there I go. Alright, good level. Forty-four seconds, zero faults. Nope, that's not happening. Not now anyway. Alright, Giga Track. Well, it says medium difficulty, so it can't be like the final level of the game by intent, right? I'll bet it's just a big level with big jumps. That's why it's called Giga Track. Uh, nope. What's back here? Oh, uh, nope. Shit. That seems get overable. Maybe if I go full reverse, I'll have enough speed. Oh, oh, uh, we squirreling? Why is that log stopping? 
What are these physics? What's going on with that log? Well, that feels like a place where a squirrel would be. Maybe I didn't roll far enough. Now this is a very different type of track than we've heard so far. Uh-oh. But... What other series would you want to watch after Hunter x Hunter? Uh... Well, I've thought about it. We talked about Dragon Ball GT, just because you haven't, like, seen the whole thing. Uh, Code Geass is just generally an amazing series that pretty much anyone who's watched it would recommend. A little bit Death note -y in terms of just, like, there's some similarities, but uh, it is also pretty different from, De from Death Note in a lot of ways. Uh... I was thinking about Slayers, just because that's a series that is kind of a slow burn. It has, like, really deeply thought out and fascinating world building, kind of like, the, you know, the Lord of the Rings universe. And it would be cool to have someone to talk to about it, because me and Jack are kind of the only ones I know who have seen it. I'd be down for Bebop. Bebop is short. Uh... Inuyasha is not bad, but I also don't know if it's good enough to merit 167 episodes. That's a commitment, Inuyasha. I'd consider it, though. But no, it's more than that, actually. 167 was the first series, and then there was uh, the final act... It'd be like 200 total with final act. And then there's Yashihime, the Boruto of Inuyasha. <laughs> it's not very good. It's funny bad. It was it was entertaining. Jack loved it. Because it was so batshit and had no idea what was doing it was doing for the entire run. I w I wasn't as kind to it. I, I didn't love Yashihime. Is it over yet? Are, are we done with the Giga track? It is very Giga. In terms of stuff I'm watching personally, I have been... On a binge watching Naruto Shippuden, which I had not until now. Though I'm taking a break from it, I'm about 350 episodes in. And I've uh, taken a break to watch My Life as a Teenage Robot. Which is not, like, a deep show. It's not a, even a show with continuity, really. I just hadn't watched it in years, and I kind of wanted to see if it held up. I've talked about it on other streams. It's by a dude who only worked on Cartoon Network shows behind this one stint on Nickelodeon. And you can really tell. It feels a lot more like a Cartoon Network show than it does like a Nickelodeon show. Very similar to kind of like Powerpuff Girls. Man. Man. 
That better not cost me silver. That did have. I bet it's gonna be three faults for silver. Uh, Darian, remind me. Did you watch Star vs. the Forces of Evil? Is that one of the things that you and Sauce watched? That's probably my favorite of the Disney, the like the Disney XD, the Disney Toons modern. The Disney cartoons with na anime like narratives, I guess. It has a lot of low points, Star Versus, but I, I, I feel like it took a lot more risks than the other ones, and I appreciate it for that, at the very least. But uh, I mention it because. Teenage Robot had one episode recently where they did they did a Star Versus thing, where uh, the nerd character Sheldon was like uh, he was sent into space and he lived out like 75 years and then came back the next day as an old man because something something relativity. And they fix it by the end of the episode. They have like a de aging machine, but he still technically lived for like a hundred years. I kind of want to see if that ever comes up again. I don't think it will. It, it doesn't seem like the kind of show to ever reference that again. Well, this music is downright chill. I like this track. The music track. Not, not as much the, the, the regular track. This is a marathon track. This is one where getting gold is going to require, like, a lot of precision. Not because it's a hard track, but just because it's so long that you can't afford to make mistakes. You gotta make the whole thing in one go for gold. Oh my god, it's still going! Does this count as the video game rule, where, like, the nicer the music is, the harder the level is? Is this one of those cases? I was salty about the ending. Yeah, a lot of people don't love the, the Star vs. ending. I'm just glad the show kept me guessing up until the end. Whereas, my second favorite was probably Amphibia, because it had uh, very solid comedy writing, likable characters. And it had a narrative, even if it wasn't, like, the most amazingly interesting narrative for most of it. And then the final season hit, and it was just, it was very predictable. And that made me sad. Me and Jack guessed, like, every turn the story was going to make throughout the entire final season. Which, again, Hunter x Hunter is very good about not doing that. And, like, doing things in surprising ways you wouldn't expect. Not just for the sake of being random or surprising, but, uh... Ways that make sense that you wouldn't expect, given that you're watching a fictional show and you expect certain tropes. That's the best kind of surprising. Hunter x Hunter and Code Geass are like the two shows that are very, very good at that, I feel. Are we done? Stop sign. That's the end, right? No? Oh my god, we're almost eight minutes. You're giving me a bar to clear? Two bars? How have I not run out of gas by now? Hole. Other hole. 
more hills. Okay, we're back on grass. We're back on the ground. Giga track indeed. Was this just like an experiment for them? Or are they testing the limits of their own level editor? How long can we get away with making a level? Before the average computer of this era runs out of RAM. Or whatever they were designing the game for. I guess it was... This was on PC. It was also, uh... 360? I think Evolution was still on 360. And, uh, PS3. They should have called this level Energizer. Because it keeps going. And going. And going. And going. I, I give up. I'm not even going to try to predict when the level ends anymore. I'm just along for the ride. I'm the metaphorical sidecar on this motorcycle. They should have that in these games, like a little brother mode, where you get a sidecar. And player two has, like, influence, but only, like, one-tenth the influence that player one has. So you can give the controller to your, like, three-year-old brother and, hey, look, you're playing too. Alright, somehow that was silver at eight bales in almost ten minutes. Hey, let's do it again and go for gold. They're actually nice. They allow six faults for gold on this one. All right, well, that was that. Then there's Cutting Edge Death Valley Trials Trophy. Uh, tournaments, it sucks. Tournaments is just like the, the Grand Prix mode. Where you play as uh, multiple, you play through multiple levels of the game. Ah, it's only worth one medal per tournament too. That's ah, not worth it, no thanks. What's in the skill game circus? Are there any of the there are three of these that we haven't yet played. Let's try these out. Can you deliver the ball to the end without dropping it? Oh, I'm not as salty about the Star versus ending as everyone else was. Okay. I I completely misread that. Yeah, I don't really mind it either. I don't necessarily know how it could have been better given things. No, 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 back, reverse. Bronze. How far do I need to get for silver? 75. I was, oh, I was so close. I wonder if that, that's probably as far as I get before the ball touches the floor. So if I just floored it, I could have gotten that. Open world trials game. Is that possible? I'm thinking of the logistics for how that could conceivably work. Because it's on a 2D plane. It sounds like something that would be very difficult, but not completely impossible. I say that because I, I have a pretty open mind about uh, 2D side-scrolling games. Given that most of my favorite games are some other genre combined with 2D side-scrolling. The only MOBA I play was uh, Awesome Knots, which is the 2D platforming one. The only MMO I played was Maple Story, which Maple Story sucks. That's a terrible game. But I played it because it was a 2D platformer. The only roguelike I like is Spelunky, because it's a 2D platformer. I like seeing different uh, different genres mixed into it. I don't know how open world could work. 
without thinking about it. Particularly open world and motorcycles. It's cool that uh, fans have done open world Pokemon by now. It's kind of a shame Nintendo hasn't. I mean, they have in terms of, like, we've gotten open world Pokemon generations. But, like, uh, like Pokemon Online or whatever that is, we, we've, we have to rely on fan games for uh, games that let us travel to multiple regions. Although, I, I get it. At some point, the Pokemon franchise has to say, okay, we can't, like, keep including everything in the franchise forever, but... It's a little disappointing that it never happened in any official capacity, just like a game where you could experience multiple... Uh, go to multiple gens. I haven't been paying attention. What am I doing? Swing the Rider. Swing the rider and then bail out. You mean like this? Am I doing it right? Oh, wait. Okay, I need to I need to grab and swing like some daring young man on a flying trapeze. I need to I need to see the controls again. giant playground with various trials maps jammed into one space. Well, I'm thinking, because these aren't 2D environments. These are 3D environments where your, your character is stuck to a 2D plane. So imagine them intersecting. Like, imagine I'm going through my 2D area and someone else on a different 2D plane passes by me. Okay, why to bail and then why to grab, I think. All right, silver. I'll take it. I'll take silver. That'd be a cool idea for a game in general, actually. Not even just trials, but like, uh, like some interactive 2D platformer where different 2D planes intersect, and you can, I don't know, bonk people in passing or something. Explode your way to freedom. Sounds good to me. Left with A to explode yourself and jump through the lab. What do you mean? Oh, well, I exploded, nothing happened. Use left and right. Okay, so I was supposed to be off the bike and that didn't happen for some reason. Okay, so I have three explosions, and I can reset them by hitting other explosive barrels. Sometimes it just fails to... It fails to, like, knock me off the bike at the start like it's supposed to. Well, how do I go from there? Hold on, I'm not understanding how the jumps reset. Touch a horizontal service to recharge them. Okay. Sometimes it just fails to, like, knock me off my bike at the start. It's like Trials Flappy Bird. Kinda. Not, it's not really like that at all, actually. 
Now that I understand what I'm doing, though, this is way easier. Okay, can't touch water. Water's bad for some reason. I guess it'll put out my explosions, and that would be bad. Welcome to a Trials Bakugo edition. Uh oh. Nope. That's water. Uh, am I good? Okay, I'm good. Hmm. Nope. Ah, uh, okay, I'm fine. We gaming. I hope I'm going the right way. Oh, hey, there's the end. No, I didn't want to redo. Get out of here. All right, we got a gold. Uh, what else we got? I've been going for two hours. I think this is a good time to call the stream. So next time, we have Cutting Edge and hopefully... Well, yeah, we'll have enough for Death Valley. We have two batches of levels left. I don't know if this is, like, this entails any gameplay or anything. But uh, we have those two batches of levels, and we have a couple more stuff in uh, the Trials HD batch. You know what? I'll try these two. I'll, I'll finish the game with the rest of the mini games. I'll finish the stream with that. Let's see what these three are, real quick. I get to pick motorcycles for these ones, so they can't be that strange. Use the paddles and go for height. Bail out to get extra height. Oh, these are automatic. I don't control the paddles. Hmm? Up. Oh, higher. We can do better. No, land. Ah! That was a bad jump. I'm not doing great this time. Bail out to gain extra height. Well, I guess I can, yeah. If I'm just going I'm just going for height in, in meters is all this is measuring. Ah, No, my corpse went higher. That didn't count. Get up. Get higher. I want to get... I know I can get silver, at least. I wish I didn't have to wait through this countdown every time. All right, we're done with pinball. I'm good. Bronze is fine. 
flip hunter. How many flips can you manage? All right, I, I can flip. Okay, maybe it was too many flips. We also have a uh, pinball paddles again. Where am I going? Alright, five flips. Oh, they want ten for silver? I'm good. The bike's front wheel is loose. Ride with your up front wheel in the air as long as possible. Okay. Uh, bike noddle. I can't use the donkey. They won't let me donkey. I guess I'll scorpion. Kind of seems like a bad idea, but I maybe I can just get as far as possible by going as fast as possible. Maybe not. Wait, maybe I'm onto something. Maybe not. Okay, silver. Good enough. 120 for gold. I could probably manage that. But not today. All right. Well, I the good news is I don't think I'll have to do any grinding off stream. I don't think I'll have to get like a bunch of gold in order to have all the levels available. So that's something I can be happy about. But that's it for today. That's it for our trial stream. I'll be back to this hopefully sooner than like five or six months or whatever this was for the next one. Also got to get back to uh, Paper Mario and hopefully finish Breath of the Wild this weekend is the plan. So uh, tune in for that with me and Jack. Thank you guys for hanging out and I'll see you guys next time.